If you have a no bake or broil situation on an electric oven, I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to troubleshoot it and replace it. The only tools you're gonna to need is a multimeter that can read AC voltage and ohms and a 10 to one, 11 to one. Yeah, this is 11 to one. Basically what you need is you need a nut driver, which is a quarter inch nut driver. You need maybe a Phillips, maybe straight in. We're gonna see. But those are the basic tools. So you really just need two tools to do this job. It's a very easy job. First thing you wanna do is create you a good work environment. Get your racks out of there. Do not lay them on your glass. Do not lay anything on the glass top. That's just a good rule. Now you can see we're exposed to the cavity. You're gonna take your 11 and one, and you're gonna flip it around to your regular bladed screwdriver. Okay, that's what we're gonna use. If you look real closely, I'm gonna show this to you. Do you see that connection right there? Do you see that item on your door? Either your door pulls straight off, or you have a system like this. All you're gonna do is get on the side and lift straight up. Do you see how that popped up? Push it all the way back as far as you can. You can do that to the other one as well. Okay, once you get into that position, make sure they are locked into that position because you do not want to damage your door. They are springs that are loaded. You're gonna raise it up slowly. You're gonna grab your handle Just like this. And what you're gonna do with one motion, you're gonna lift straight up and out. Okay? Walk your door. Do not set it on the hinge. Set the door flat like this on the floor. Do not put this hinge right here on the floor. That must be pointing straight up. Once you get that in a good and secure location, it is the same thing to test for the broil as it is to test for the bake. We're gonna show the bake just because it's so much easier to do. Okay, it's, it's the same tools that you're going to need. As you can see, the power is still on to this oven. The next thing we want to do is cut that power. Go to the breaker box and cut it there. You do not have to pull the appliance out. Once the power is turned off, as we can see it is, either it's gonna be a quarter inch or it's gonna be a Phillips. This one is a Phillips. If you're not sure if the power is off, test for the power. But if your clock is not lit and there's no lights on, I would say you're pretty safe. That's not always the case, but it's a good indication. These elements are energized at all times. Remember that, they are energized at all times. You can read your element with continuity, but it is not accurate as ohms is the most accurate. Go ahead, just pull it straight out. After you take your screws out, pull it straight out. As you can see, you don't have much room. Did you see how that one pulled off? It's still in there. What you would want to do if that's the case, is make sure you have some forceps. We're gonna bring in an additional tool. We're gonna to bring in a pair of what they call forceps or anything, and we're just gonna lock it on to that spade clip. Now that spade clip can't back up. Lock it back on there, onto the metal part. I mean, onto the, excuse me, onto the part that is not metal, that's actually coated. 
The other one has a little bit more slack, so that's not gonna be required of it. We could just unplug it. Okay. We got to be careful because the next step is gonna be very, very important that we do. In fact, I'm gonna lock this one on just a little bit different for y'all. I'm gonna come around. See, you don't want to lose that spade clip. Which I just did. I just lost that spade clip. See, if you lose that spade clip, then you gotta pull this whole thing out. So get you some, get you some nice forceps. Okay, lock it in there, and that holds it into position. We can remove the bake element. Now, we haven't tested that bake element to know if it's good or bad. You have two things that could be bad here. Either the bake element is not getting voltage, or the bake element is bad. So we have to test for voltage at the bake element. That is the most important thing you can do. Set your meter to voltage. Take one of your leads and plug it in to your bake element on one side. Do the same thing on the other side. Turn it to AC voltage. So you can see what, how it looks. Let me show it to you. Okay. Now we know we're not gonna get electrocuted and nothing's gonna spark or be funny about it. We know we're perfectly safe. And what we want to do is this. Turn it to AC voltage, so we can read it for AC voltage. And go flip your breaker back on. As you can see, there is voltage going to it. And whenever we, next thing we're gonna do, is come up here on a clock, and we're going to hit clear. We're gonna hit bake, and we're gonna hit start. And we should, if we have a good board, if the relay is good in the board, you have 247. We're calling for it to bake, and it is sending the voltage down. So we know the only issue that we could possibly have is with the bake element itself. You say, Riley, but I want to test that bake element. Well, let's, let's get you into testing on how to test that bake element. But before we do that, we got to turn the breaker off. All right, so the power is dead. And now we can Remove our, our meter. What you want to do on your meter is see what resistance you have. I know this meter has a resistance issue. Let me show you what I mean by that. We can go to ohms. This is an old, old meter, guys. But doesn't mean you can't use an old meter, but just figure out what your resistance is. Touch them together. Six, my resistance is six. You remember that. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna check for ohms. Make sure it's on your little horseshoe, which is ohms. Do not use continuity as it is not accurate. Put one on one side, put one on the other side. See it says 29.2, so trap six. That means we're 20, we're 23.2. That's perfect. We know that's that bake element is good. Usually a bake element, if it's bad, will read infinity. Sometimes it'll read as low as 10. Sometimes it'll read like high too. It'll read like 100 ohms. But usually between 20 to 30 is a good bake element. You can always go to the data sheet on the unit to check it. But if you're getting 20 to 30, I'll say you pretty much have a good bake element. If you're reading extremely low or extremely high, then there's, a, is, there's an issue with the resistance. But always check the resistance on your meter first. So let's say the bake element was bad, right? It's the same thing to reinstall it. You're gonna plug it back up. 
Do not take your force and stuff because you don't want to lose. Just plug it back up. And you want to make sure they're tight. If they're not tight, you want to put a new spade clip on there. But if it is good and tight like these are, these are extremely tight. Undo your faucet. Make sure that it is not cut into your wire anywhere. And it is not. Make sure the clips are on the good one last time. Insert the bake element back in. And put your screws back in. Now you say, what about that door, Raleigh? Well, we're going to get to that door in a minute. How to get that door back on. Before we put the door back on, let's get the racks back on, all right? Let's get the racks back on. Here they are. Maybe they go straight up towards the front. I know they go towards the front. Yeah, they go straight up. Straight up. Different preach, each of them sometimes, but it, it's the same concept, guys. So when you put this door back on, you'll grab the handle just like you did. But what you'll do is I'll try to do this. Get the side of that, so that's what you want to see. You wanna see how I stick it in there. So when you stick it in there, you're going just like this, right? You're gonna put it in there, just like that. You get it in there, you start it to love, right? And you just kind of get it in there, and you kind of raise it up slightly, not all the way. So that way you feel like you're dropped in all the way, and then you're gonna go down with it. And if you're in the right spot, you're gonna feel it clip in. And if you're not, which I'm not, did you hear that? Did you hear how it slipped in there? Go down. Okay, once you're in there right, you'll fill it in there. Push your clip down, push your clip down, make sure they're good and down. And you wanna raise it to the half cock, because don't take your hands off. Raise it to the half cock position. See, so base the half cock position, and raise it all the way up. And go all the way down with it. And it shouldn't fall off. Alright guys, like and subscribe, and as always, we do um, morning streams on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sundays. Please come there and, and have a great time with us. Thank you so much for watching.